stay safe, stay active and stay healthy. <laughs>
So it's really important, again, that you keep your eyes on the ball when you um, are rolling and when you are trapping and keep an eye on where those targets are because you don't want to touch them. The idea is to go through the middle so it doesn't touch the cones. Start fairly close to each other and have your um, obstacles fairly far apart to start with. And then I'll show you how you can make it a little bit more challenging. Right, let's have, let's have a go, Zanthi. Start a little bit further back. Okay, so roll, I'm gonna roll it with one hand through her cone and I'm gonna attempt to stop it with my hand. Now Zanthi's gonna stop it with her hand. Good stuff. So watching the ball, especially when you're trapping, so you can track it with your eyes and get your body behind it. Good stuff. Now you can stop it with one or two hands. Think about which would be the best way, the safest way to trap the ball. Oh, that was a harder one. Keep your eyes, try not to have your feet too far apart when you're trapping, so you don't want it to go through your leg. Oh, unlucky. So if you want to pause the video there and have a go at some rolling and trapping through your coat. Okay, we're now going to show you how to make it easier or harder. So if you're struggling with this activity, start a little bit closer to your partner and have your two cones or two obstacles further apart. So you've got a greater space to roll through. If you're finding it quite easy and you want to challenge yourself, you basically need to do the opposite. So move your cones or obstacles closer together and stand further away from your partner. So we're going to try at that level. We're going to move these a bit closer. And Xanthi and I are going to stand a little further away. So we really need to be accurate now, are rolling through the middle and stopping with hands. Good, make sure it roll, don't throw it. Good. So Xanthi, using one hand or two to stop the ball. What are you doing? That time was one. What do you think is the safest way of doing it? Two hands. Why do you think two might be better than one when you're tracking? Oh. Yes, yeah, so if you're using just one hand and attempting to trap the ball, it might not be as accurate, it might not be as safe as cupping your hands and trying to stop it with two because you've got. It can, easily roll out. it can easily roll out, so you're doubling your chance at being safe with your trapping. Okay, and do we want to have our feet really far apart when we're stopping the ball? Yeah. Why is that then? Why do we want our legs to go through? Okay, so a ball could go through our legs. So we need to think about making a barrier or a wall behind the ball to stop it. Yeah, yeah nice idea. I like the way you bent down, but you stayed on your feet still. Because if we dive, then it's going to take more time to then stand up and roll the ball back. So we need to stay on our feet and maybe just bend down to create that wall or barrier. Brilliant. No holes, so no gaps for the ball to go through. Let's have one more go, Zanthi, thinking about those ideas. So making sure we're using two hands to trap the ball. Don't get down too early, Zabby, just in case the ball changes direction. Good. Two hands again. I like the way you're bending down. Get nice and low, scooping, and then go. No gaps. Making a barrier with your body. Oh, I like the way you turn sideways there. That was a cool way of doing it as well. That's a long barrier. Okay, if you want to pause the video there and have a bit more of a go and obviously change the distance of your obstacles or the distance away from your partner as you feel appropriate. Okay, the next one, Zanthi, we're going to carry on doing the rolling and trapping, but this time the person doing the trapping is going to start in the middle of the cones, almost acting like a goalkeeper in hockey or football. And the person doing the rolling is going to have to make that person who's the goalkeeper move a little bit. So again, they need to keep their eyes on the ball when they're trapping, get their body behind the ball so it doesn't go through the cones and think about the best way to use their body to stop that ball. So we're going to bring our cones a little bit further apart. Zanthi is going to do the rolling first, first of all, and I'm going to do the trapping. Move back a bit, Zanthi. Okay, now your job, Zanthi, is to try and roll it past me, and I'm going to stand in the middle. Move back a little bit, Pickle. Okay. You're ever so close. Oh, good one. I like the way you're thinking about making me move. Whoa, a little bit, little bit gentler, Zanthi. We're trying to show people what we're going to do. That's a throw. Make sure you're rolling it. Oh, good one. So again, I'm using two hands to stop the ball, cupping it with both hands, and I'm always keeping my eyes on the ball particularly if it moves to the side, so I get my body behind it. 
Good. Now we're going to swap over. Zampi is going to be the goalkeeper. So think about the best way that you're going to trap it so it doesn't go through the cone. Ready? Good. She got down. Not too early, but made a, bod a, a barrier with her, with her body. Good. It could go to the left or the right. So you've always got to be ready. And then when they get better, you might look like you're going to throw one way, but actually roll it the opposite way to trip them, to outwit your opponent. Excellent job, Zappy. Okay, and you might have a certain number of attempts each and see how many goals you can score or save. Or if you want to, have a go at playing against your partner to turn it into a little game. Okay, if you want to pause the video there and have a go at this task. you've enjoyed doing the rolling and trapping so far and you're getting even better at stopping the ball with your hands and getting your body behind the ball. These are really key fielding skills for activities like cricket and rounders that you're going to have a go at playing in the future. Our final activity is going to be a game of squash. Ideally you need a wall for this one because in a game of squash you hit the ball up against the wall and the person you're playing against or your partner gets the rebound, gets the ball when it bounces off of the wall. OK, um, we're going to carry on using the tennis ball for this activity, but you might have a small, medium sized ball instead. So Zampi and I are going to stand facing our wall. OK, right, Zampi, you're going to be standing facing the wall. She's going to roll the ball at the wall like we've done before with one hand. I'm going to watch the ball and then I'm going to bend down and attempt to stop it with my hands before rolling it back to Xanthi again. And we're going to make it continuous like a rally. OK, Xanthi. So rolling. And then you need to make sure you come out of the way a little bit to let my partner have a go. Good. Obviously, how hard you roll the ball against the wall is how hard it's going to bounce off or how far it's going to bounce off. You might need to be very wary of the space that you've got. Good. And don't wait for the ball to come to you. Go and meet the ball so it's still moving when you're trapping and stopping it. Thinking about stopping it with two hands like before. Getting the body low and body behind the ball to make that barrier. Good. You have to be making sure you're cooperating with your partner to move out of each other's way as well. Especially if you're in a small space. Oh, and then you can do cheeky ones like softer ones and harder ones to make your partner work. Good, Oh, good stuff. Okay, and if you want to pause the video there and have a go, and obviously you could then have a go at playing against your partner, so you can make up your own scoring system as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's rolling and trapping activities and I hope you're getting better at those key skills. And remember, stay safe, stay active, stay healthy.